let's get started. I'll introduce myself. Okay. Um, I already put uh, the my uh, the draft of my slides deck uh, in the uh, tag MD. So you can, yeah, you, if that's not clear, you can use that this uh, this link in the hack ND. Okay. So, yeah, this uh, topic is, is quite uh, long, but uh, actually uh, what I want to talk uh, is uh, my experience of um, converting stable diffusion to TFLI so that uh, I can use uh, stable diffusion on Android devices. Um, hopefully, the experience uh, could serve as uh, inspiration for your future generative uh, AI on mobile devices. Okay, who I am? Uh, yeah, I'm, you, you can see I'm quite old. I learned to use open source software uh, before the term open source was coined. Um, I'm a software guy. I learned to use uh, Unix uh, and the open source software on Vex11. That's a mainframe mini computer uh, running BSD Unix. Uh, recently, I work on, uh, mostly work on uh, neural network performance on edge devices related uh, stuff. Uh, I am a TensorFlow contributor. You can see uh, my name is listed uh, in the TensorFlow release note. And I also work on an uh, industrial consortium called MLPerf uh, to, to build uh, an, a mobile benchmark application. Um, yeah, this is a typical uh, disclaimer. The opinions expressed are my own. Okay, so uh, to, to explain my experience, it's like a, uh, to, to explain magic, uh, then it's not magic anymore. Okay, uh, this, is, this quotation is from Arthur C. Clarke, who, who is one of the most uh, uh, greatest uh, sci-fi author of uh, the 20th century, I think. Uh, it says, um, any sufficient advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah. Uh, when I saw uh, the stable diffusion last year, it's like magic to me. And then, I s then in the, uh, in August, oh no. Yeah, August. In August uh, or uh, November last year, I saw that uh, Apple ported uh, stable diffusion to to M1 to iPhone. Then I started uh, to work on converted uh, uh, those uh, models to TF Light, and started uh, to learn something about the uh, models used by stable diffusion then it's no longer a magic. So yeah, I share my experience. So yeah, we have some overview. Then it's mostly uh, how to run stable diffusion on your Android device. Uh, the, ver the very first step uh, is to convert the 14 point 32 models to, to, to also 14.32 TF9 models. Um, but uh, that's not enough because uh, for most uh, current uh, Android devices, the, yeah, s most uh, neural network accelerators support 14 point FP16. Uh, we can, we can kind of run FP32 models on FP16 uh, mode. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, to get uh, the best performance, uh, usually we need to run the model in quantized uh, int8. 
that's current situation. Uh, so uh, FP32 is not uh, enough. We need to uh, perform post training quantization to have a uh, uh, eight bit uh, uh, integer quantized model. And but uh, then converge Converting models is not enough because uh, a valid, uh, even if you got a valid uh, uh, TF9 model, um, it's not uh, guaranteed to have a good performance uh, or say the model probably will not run well uh, on your neural network accelerators. I, uh, yeah, touch some of these issues and then recap okay so i are most so when i when i uh submitted uh, this proposal i was planning to talk also about the llama about the cpp because uh yeah i i, I also did uh, some uh initial work to help uh, uh this guy to have um Nama running on Android devices, but uh, but uh, to get as you might know, uh, to get uh, those um, Nama model running well on on small memory devices, you have to use uh, say four bit or six bit uh, quantization, but uh, it's not uh, well supported on. Oh, not well supported. It's not supported at all for, uh, by an API, Android and an API. So, yeah, that's not, there's no too many information to share about the uh, not supported features. So, yeah, I'll focus on the stable diffusion part. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's skip this. Yeah, as you can see, Nama and Nama two are just a transformer with some kind of optimization, normalization, uh, different activation function, different positioning, uh, encoding, uh, different uh, attention layers. Okay, so I start from uh, the the stable diffusion model I used. So I, uh, I used uh, uh, Keras CVs, uh, Keras computer regions, stable diffusion implementation because uh, uh, my ultimate goal is uh, to convert uh, to TF9 file. And uh, uh, if I start uh, from PyTorch, I have to convert from PyTorch to Anis, then to from Anis to TF or TF Lite. That's not a very convenient, and uh, there could be more uh, troubles. Um, and the second reason I studied from Keras CV is that uh, um, it's it's called look more much more easier to understand to me, okay? Um, the Keras CV implementation use uh, weights uh, from the PyTorch implementation. So uh, for Python level, you can expect that uh, they are mostly the same if you give the same input. Okay, so why I say it's uh, quite clear. So uh, when we want to use uh, the stable diffusion model, uh, single line is enough just to uh, run Keras CV model, stable diffusion, that's a case. And we 
initialize an object, then 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 we got the whole pipeline constructed, and then we can uh, get the models uh, from from this instance. There are text encoder, uh, diffusion model, and the decoder, and the text encoder is to take. Uh, it, it's not exactly this because there is tokenizer. Uh, uh, your text is tokenized, uh, then feed into the, the text encoder, then with uh, render number and feed into the diffusion model and then run the decoder. That's it. Basically, that's, the, the, that's it. And with uh, something like uh, model text, uh, we, we can, in Keras, we can, uh, we can call uh, uh, kind of instance and master the summary uh, to ask an instance to, to print, uh, to dump all the layers, uh, which we will use later. Okay, um, as I said, to get uh, uh, an API friendly uh, TF light, we have to we, we can try to either convert it to FP32 or a quantized model. Uh, for FP32, that's easier because we can uh, simply convert those model. Uh, for quantized to do the model, we when we want to do the quantization, uh, we have to feed some data. Uh, hopefully, the data you feed are representative data, so that uh, the range quantized could be uh, useful. When you otherwise you might run into trouble when you feed uh, some data that uh, is not. Uh, Within the range of the 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 data you used to quantize. Okay, um, to convert uh, from TensorFlow or say from Keras uh, to to TFLight, there are three uh, functions uh, in the TFLight converter. They are uh, Keras from Keras model, from safety model, and the concrete uh, functions. Uh, uh, here you can see on the uh, left hand side, it's the, the text encoder summary, you know, what I mentioned before. So, um, well, I, yeah, the order of the slide is wrong. So, so uh, if we convert the model directly uh, without uh, specify the uh, batch size, the default, uh, by default, the model generated by Keras uh, is to have a dynamic batch size which means uh, the batch size uh, will be determined uh, at the wrong time. Uh, if we do that and uh, try to run it uh, uh, with uh, TF lights benchmark model and, and, and use an API, which means as to, to delegate the, the model to an API, and and there, there is a low dynamic uh, dimension option for an API, but the model we convert uh, with dynamic batch size will have trouble. The, the generated model is not a, yeah, it's not a very and then API friendly. Okay, so we have to uh, fix the batch size. Uh, to fix the batch size, the best way I know is to do 
uh, run concrete function to save to save the model to save the model and uh, then load it and uh, get uh, the signature and yeah from a, a specific uh, signature then we can get uh, the concrete function then we can set the uh, uh, function size uh, the the batch size to to a static one and if you are not you used the uh, if you are not used the uh, oh no if you don't know how to produce this uh, warning message uh, this is uh, not a well documented because it, it's in the source code I don't know if it's documented anywhere so uh, in the in the source code of TFDI and an API delegate, there are some uh, if defined. Uh, if you add the, the define, then then you can print this message when you run it when you when you build uh, uh, the benchmark model. Okay, uh, if we fix the batch size for the text encoder. Uh, we can delegate uh, most of the, the uh, one, oh, the one thousand uh, five hundred something node. Only two gather gather is invading. It's table lookup node. Uh, uh, this this should be delegatable, but uh, this is on um, pixel phone. The pixel phone just doesn't support it. It's not an API's, uh, an API runtime support. It's an API driver's problem. Okay, so, so you can uh, think this as a, as a fully dedicated, but uh, as you might notice, this number is not good. I'll talk about this later. And for decoder with the dynamic batch size, uh, we, we the previous one is uh, the encode the text encoder. Uh, for uh, decoder, there are other issues. Even with fixed batch size, we can see that uh, there are many uh, output range should be less equal. Less or equal to less than or equal to four, or uh, rank larger than four is not supported. Something like this. Uh, this, yeah, this is limitation of an API. Um, why, why there is such problem? That's because of uh, group normalization. Uh, this is a quick review of uh, group normalization. Basically, just split the the, the channel uh, the channel dimension into different group. And when you split the the, the shape, the shape it, then then the rank is changed. So originally, that's kind of the rank is four, but uh, with uh, group normalization. Uh, we we have uh, uh, the rank equal to five, something like this. This is the reason why it failed to delegate. And so, how to deal with this? That actually quite simple. If we check the original uh, group norm paper uh, you can simply you, you can you can implement the group known quite simply and the uh, a, na a naive idea to deal with this uh, rank problem is that we just split uh, the 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 
the one or say the dimension we want to deal with into uh, different uh, different uh, layer known and then concat concatenate the uh, back then it works it's like this uh, for those uh, you want to split you just split, really split it and uh, all the drink here will be four or less than four and yeah this is doable and after that uh, we can we can we can have a decoder that could could be dedicated to an API theoretically there's uh, one more problem because uh, uh, when you try to dedicate a larger model, large model uh, via an API or say an API hydro, yeah, it seems there is a transaction limitation. Uh, how do we deal with the limitation? A uh, simple solution is just change that uh, delegate or you can try to split the model yeah there could be several possibility that's that's for the decoder uh, for the the main diffusion model uh, there's a main obstacle the main obstacle is that uh, the original FP32 um model over the diffusion model is um 3.5 gigabyte it's a large model yeah not as large as those uh, large language models but it's large uh there's problem because uh, the tf that uh, uh by definition from its schema, it doesn't support a file size larger than two gigabyte. And this is not a this is not a, a TFLI only limitation. If you know protocol buffer, which is uh, the the format used by TensorFlow, there is also this kind of problem. And sometimes you can walk around this, get around this, but uh, uh, mostly you will hit this problem anyway. So uh, a clean, I a, a, a working idea is. Yeah, it's simple. Just to split the diffusion model, and there is a group known group normalization in the diffusion model. Okay, so to split the, the diffusion model, we have to look at the uh, we have to check the original architecture model uh, fig uh, figure. Uh, the the diffusion model is the unit here, and it's a unit with uh, say skip connection or residual connection. So if we uh, cut here, we cannot uh, just uh, count this connection. We have to count all the skip connections. So when we do the split, we we have to check the connection between the subgroups we split it. So if we check, we split here, and we have to check all the nodes uh, here, all the nodes within the first uh, group subgroup and the the the, the node within the second group to see if there is uh, connections between 
the two group, if there, there are, um, then we we should uh, keep those connections as uh, uh, say output of the first part and uh, as input of the second part. That that. That's not hard. That, that's, that's not difficult. That's just kind of a, a couple lines of code. And, and with that, uh, I have uh, some implementation to split the, the chaos, diffusion, chaos CV diffusion model into two TFD models. Okay, uh, converting FP32 to FP32 is easy because uh, we just convert, try to convert the model. But uh, when we try to convert the, the to, to, to quantize integer, uh, there are more questions. There are more issues because we have to prepare some data. some representative data. Uh, basically, what we can do is to uh, borrow uh, the tokenizer, random number generator, and uh, the, uh, the, the time step embedding and the schedule code from the main loop. Then we can do the quantization. And, but uh, to really know how to do that, uh, we have to dump uh, the three models to, to check the real uh, inputs and the output tensors. I won't go to the, in the, the, the detail, but uh, yeah, just use these um, text encoders and example uh, the encoder. The, the input to the text encoder is tokens are tokens and the positions, and uh, and uh, we should uh, know all the range, value the range, etc. Et and yeah, if you want to know more, there you you can find uh, uh, all the information from its paper uh, and the uh, and the source code to see what the uh, where does the text encoder come from? Uh, the tokenizer, it's a, it's a different, it's a variant of a by the pair the encoding. Uh, there are several implementations. Uh, for, for, the, for the quantization, we can just borrow the Python implementation. Okay, uh, for the diffusion model, yeah, if you don't know what the diffusion model is and want to get it to know it, uh, my recommendation, uh, based on my experience, is uh, to start from Keras CV's code. And, and if you are a more mathematical, theoretical guy, uh, Lillian Wen, yeah, the girl who is a PM of uh, OpenAI, yeah, have good article. Yeah, uh, that's just one possibility of how to interpret, uh, uh, how to how to how to think about the, the diffusion model. Uh, people just say it's Markov chain. And if you want to know more, yeah, uh, say a couple of days ago, probably last week, yeah, last week I I saw an interesting article uh, that uh, told you uh, you can think a diffusion model as a different kind of uh, framework. Okay. So, yeah, that's just just for kind of 
due diligence, yeah, check all the input and output so that uh, I won't miss anything. And for model for quantization, yeah, we 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 also need a uh, uh, non-model stuff because of the, the that's that's to feed the the embedding the time step embedding part. What we know we should know what the time step embedding is. Okay. And uh, how should we add the uh, uh, noise? That's the scheduling sampling part. And there are more, there are more parameters to the uh, diffusion model. But uh, yeah, together it work. You you don't have you don't need to know all the details. Okay, the decoder to explain what the decoder is, and you we need uh, this figure again. Uh, the the decoder. Yeah, in the training stage, uh, the, all the input will be encoded. That's E, capital E. That's the cap, the mass capital D. Uh, when you train it, uh, you you just put the, uh, the image stuff, and then through the diffusion process, which is to add the noise, more and more noise, and then decode it back. Um, in terms of uh, uh, input tensor and the output tensor, that's quite the decoder part is quite easy. You just, yeah, it's just take one input and get one output. So. When we go through all the components, where well we have to go through all the components, so that that's because uh, to get the quantize the text encoder, yeah, we need a tokenizer. Uh, to get the quantize the diffusion model, we need a tokenizer and, and text encoder and random number generator and time step and uh, scheduling. Uh, so a couple slides ago, I, I said that when we can dedicate an uh, older text encoder, we still have a uh, performance issue. Yeah, I won't cover the detail, uh, but uh, I can mention what the problem is. The problem is that uh, for their known and the group known in Keras implementation, they all depends on TensorFlow batch known. And the TensorFlow batch known implementation uh, has some broadcast problem. You can check the detail. Uh, the, the, the solution is easy. Yeah, you just go back to the original definition of the batch known. Okay. So why you have to why we have to, to go through all of this? Because when we want to run code on Android, mostly we don't want to use Python. Yeah, it's possible to use Python uh, on Android, but uh, that's not a uh, uh, not a favorite choice for most uh, developers. You have to embed your, or say, wrap your Python interpreter into your APK. That's not the, the way to go. So I, I, I did some quick and dirty implementation in C++ to implement the tokenizer embedding uh, stuff in C++. Uh, why not in Java? Well, well, I I lost the reason. Mm. Okay, so 
because uh, mostly I work on Kamen Line. Uh, Android Kamen Line to write Java is not a, not a, not a good uh, environment. So I just use C or C++. But uh, because we have to deal with uh, vectors, vector operations, uh, and there is no standard vector operation libraries in C, so yeah, I just use C++. Then, is that all? Oh no, surely no. Because uh, optimization of um, uh, attention and the other layers of uh, older transformer variant is uh, quite a hot topic. Uh, yeah, in the end of the slide, I also put uh, some link to Google and the Apple's uh, work. Uh, they they do have some stuff. Oh, this is not a hot. Hot. This is hot. H O T. It's a hot topic. Many people. Many many people work on this. Sorry for the typo. And I think. Uh, m We'll see more and more generative models on your Android device at the end of this year or next year. Yeah, hopefully running diffusion, stable diffusion on Android is no longer magic to you. That's it. That's all I have.